Welcome to the Evolution Show. I'm Johan Landgren. Today we're talking about investing in disruptive technologies. For me, it started about 10 years ago when I invested in Tesla. And in 2014, I took delivery of this amazing electric car, a Tesla Model S. Today, I will share some of my experience investing in disruptive technologies and take a closer look at Tesla. For me, it's a bet on the future, but most people still don't get that Tesla is much more than just a car company. I hope you like the show, and if you do, give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Now, join me in my Tesla office and talk about disruptive technologies. This is the Evolution Show. What better way to talk about investing in disruptive technologies than in my Tesla office, a Tesla Model S. Today will be the start of a series where I share some of my experience successfully investing in private and public companies over the last 10 years. And for me it all started back in 2011 when I bought my first shares in Tesla Motors. I hope my thinking when it comes to investing can be helpful for newbies as well as more experienced investors when it comes to identifying companies in sustainable tech, as well as identifying trends for the future. Over the nine last years I've been invested in Tesla, the company has really been on a roller coaster in so many ways. But I still believe Tesla is only getting started, and I will make the case of Tesla potentially becoming the world's most valuable company. But more importantly, much can be learned by studying Tesla when looking for other disruptive companies. Listen in and share your thoughts at the end of the video. But before we get started, here's a quick disclaimer. Everything in this video and on the Evolution Show are my perspectives and ideas and should not be considered a recommendation to sell, buy or hold any investment. Everyone's financial situation is unique and I'm not a certified financial advisor. I may or may not hold shares in the companies I analyze. Today I will make three key points why Tesla is such a disruptive company. First, I will talk about why most people don't really understand Tesla's products and make a valuation according to an obsolete metric. With my second point, I want to address two points at the same time. Why Tesla is many companies wrapped into one and why Tesla continues to stay ahead of the curve. With my third point, I'm going to address why Tesla is not going to go bankrupt. But before I head on to talk about Tesla, I want to share three of my key lessons when it comes to investing in disruptive technologies. Disruptive technologies enables a paradigm shift in our behavior and also the narrative that breaks up with the old to create a new normal. Understanding how to invest in disruptive technologies makes it possible to stay ahead of the curve and find companies early and also maintain long positions in companies that many people question or don't understand at the early phase, but in the long run can be a very valuable investment. As an investor, it's really important to always be open-minded to new technologies and always be able to question the status quo in any industry. Look at what needs to be done to build a sustainable future and look for people that are working on the solutions instead of listening to those who say that it can't be done. When it comes to Tesla, investing in the company has opened my mind to many other investment opportunities and I have focused on electric transports and sustainable energy because these are areas I see develop long into the future and these are also the areas I've been studying for the last 10 years. And here I also come to another key lesson. Try to focus on areas you understand or be ready to do your research because this is really important when you invest in any company. Do your homework. Okay, why do I think Tesla is such an important player when it comes to the future of sustainable energy in electric transports? Well, part of my conviction comes from owning a Tesla. When I got my Tesla Model S in early 2014, there was no superchargers in Sweden and I really had to plan my longer trips, especially beyond 350 kilometers during the winter time. But since several years back, 
it is super easy to make longer trips in Sweden and in most part of Europe. And this is largely thanks to Tesla's large network of superchargers. I've been fortunate to be able to go on several road trips in Western Europe. For example, a 10-day trip where I covered Denmark, Netherlands, Belgium, France, Germany and Switzerland or a distance of about 4,300 kilometers or 6,880 miles. And this was thanks to Tesla's already by then vast supercharging network. This was an eye-opener and I met many other EV owners and people interested in Teslas. And here we come to lesson number one with Tesla and disruptive technologies. If you haven't tried the product, you can't understand the product or the company's value today or for the future. We have to remember that most people still haven't driven a Tesla or an electric vehicle. It is important to remember that even if you have lived with a Tesla for years like I have, most people still haven't taken a ride or sat behind the wheel of a Tesla or any electric vehicle for that matter. Just ask your friends or colleagues for example. Even journalists or people taking short positions, betting on the stock to go down and even arguing the company will go bankrupt have no understanding why so many people love Teslas and indeed other EVs. I've seen with my own eyes how driving a Tesla changes people when they see how easy you can charge and go on long trips, that you don't have to worry about daily trips at all, since the range is more than sufficient. It changes their ideas of what an EV can be. A Tesla is much more than just a fast car. It is already part of the electric future that merely has started. And compared to a gas or diesel car, EVs will not lose its value the same way over time. And this is simply because they are already part of the electric future. This car makes my point quite obvious, I think. My Tesla Model S is almost seven years old and there is no car on the market right now I would replace it with, other than, of course, the Tesla Model Y I'm waiting for. And of course, this is a signal of Tesla being a very successful company, being innovative and attracting a lot of new customers like me. But it's also a testament to the failure of the automakers, the established automakers, that are far from catching up to Tesla. Right now, we are on a verge of a paradigm shift in technology and behavior, where established players and thinking either haven't understood what is about to happen or simply can't keep up. This is also where you as an investor can find investment opportunities of a lifetime. I'm of course talking about electrification of almost all types of transports and many smart solutions for sustainable energy. As an early Tesla owner, I'm still to this day amazed how other automakers can question the future of Tesla when they still haven't built any serious charging network that make it easy for people to travel within and between countries. Such claims just have serious credibility to me. And for me, it's a sign of sinking old ships. Because owning an EV should be easy and you should only need to own one car, both for daily trips as well as longer trips. This moves us back to investing in disruptive companies and why I decided to invest in Tesla early on. For me, it was obvious already back in 2006 when I saw the brilliant documentary Who Killed the Electric Car? that electrification of the transport sector was coming back. It was also in line with the climate research I studied at the university during that time. And in 2010, I came to learn about Tesla, a company led by Elon Musk, an engineer and entrepreneur that gets that if the world is going to go electric in time to transition from a fossil dependent transport and energy sector, it takes an all in effort full time not a slow sideshow where only a few engineers here and there at the big auto companies develop electric engines or small specialized batteries for hybrids. But more importantly, Tesla realized that selling the cars directly creates a relationship directly with the customers and just as important, enable data collection from its customers to build future services and products with valuable input from its customers. So how about valuation of a disruptive company such as Tesla? Well, for starters, don't focus on the stock price. When I value a company 
and consider if I should invest in it. I looked at the products it develops or already makes and the people leading the company and relate it to the trends I see today and what I expect to see in the future. I don't look at how much money the company is making or not making over the last couple of years or quarters. If you're a beginner in investing, it is of course difficult to imagine that a company with a share price of say $500 could have a 10x development in only 4-5 to five years. That's why it's so important not to focus on the stock price. If the stock price is say $10-$15, to $15, it's easily perceived as a lower risk of entry with a higher potential gain. But that must not be the case. It could be the other way around. I certainly don't care about if the stock price is $5 or $2,000. The only thing that matters when you invest is where you see the future going. If the investment you are looking at have a clear market today and in the future, and if you believe it can execute on the goal it has set up. Does it have a comparative edge, for example, compared to other companies? This moves us to the second point when it comes to investing in disruptive companies. Disruptive companies innovates, thinks outside the box and creates synergies for future growth and therefore continue to stay ahead of the curve. And Tesla is a really good example of this because Tesla is many companies wrapped into one. If I were to summarize this point in one sentence it would be something like this. Tesla is staying ahead of the game and enables expansion to new customers and markets by building its own ecosystem based on technical innovation and a social community of customers and a vertical integration of its manufacturing. When most people think about Tesla, they see fast, sleek and yes, for most people still too expensive electric cars. But for me, it's a company now financially strong enough to reach the goal it has set up from the start. To be able to make a difference by getting close to mass produce electric vehicles for the masses and really light the fire under the butt of the big companies because you can't ignore the demand for electric vehicles anymore. And Tesla has set the standard for EVs with long range, innovative tech in the car and a charging infrastructure that is easy to use and it has created the foundation for a global community that looks to a future where electric vehicles becomes a central part of a mobility as a service network. But Tesla is much more than the world's leading EV manufacturer. Tesla is also an exponentially growing energy company, providing energy storage systems for private customers and large utility scale solutions, like one of the world's largest energy storage systems in southern Australia. At the latest Q2 earnings call, Elon Musk stated that, quote, Tesla Solar is the lowest cost solar in the United States, and we added lowest cost guarantee and money back guarantee. So we're very confident that people will have our solar product, whether it's solar retrofit or the solar roof. Our solar is now 30% cheaper than the US average. After the federal tax credit, Tesla Solar now costs $1.49 per watt. Now if we consider that more and more people will install solar roofs and also want batteries in the next couple of years, Tesla is in a leading position to provide this at a lower price than most of its competitors. This alone makes it easy for Tesla to grow, but few seem to realize that the market for solar energy like EVs is so big that the current providers won't be able to keep up with the demand for many years to come. And just like the market for EVs, there will be more than enough room for many sustainable energy providers in many years to come, simply because the market for sustainable energy is still very tiny compared to what's today dominated by the fossil energy industry. And this moves us to another area where Tesla is far ahead of its competition. Because Tesla is also in the lead when it comes to reaching fully self-driving vehicles or so-called full level 5 autonomy for its vehicle. Why I believe this is the case is not only how far they have come with its autopilot features today. Tesla has been able to gather enormous amounts of data on driving patterns, traffic situations and hardware and software vulnerabilities 
that are key in order to reach full self-driving. It's really obvious that the other auto manufacturers don't even come close to the amount of data Tesla already have, and this enables them to build up its self-driving neural net with real driving experience, which is essential to reach full autonomy. Another key element that Tesla is developing is its own hardware and software for the self-driving units in the cars. This gives them an overview of everything that works and what needs to be improved so it can be fixed immediately. This in turn accelerates Tesla's ability to innovate. And this of course moves us to Tesla becoming a provider of what's called mobility as a service. At first making its self-driving cars taxis for its customers to make money from, where Tesla takes a slice for administrating the system, and of course, eventually Tesla will build its own Tesla taxi fleet, where it can take all the profits. I can talk much more about this of course, but let's just say that this will become an enormous money maker and a game changer for Tesla once it becomes operational. And I think we can see fully self-driving taxi fleets from Tesla within just a couple of years. It is of course difficult to put a number on this at this stage, but it's reasonable to believe that we're talking about billions of dollars in revenue for Tesla every year. Aside from becoming a leading automaker, mobility provider and energy company, Tesla is also about to become an insurance provider, which is a no-brainer if you think about it. Tesla also knows everything about what's happening with the cars, thanks to its eyes the cameras and the sensors, because Tesla knows everything about its customers driving patterns, which makes it possible to set tailor-made insurance prices lower than other insurance companies, that can analyze a traffic situation as it happens. This is any insurance company's dream. As I mentioned before, Tesla is many companies wrapped into one. It's more than just an automaker. It's an energy company, insurance company, and soon a mobility and taxi network. But it's also a vertically integrated company. This means that most of the components Tesla need to make its cars and energy storage units are manufactured by the company itself. This makes it less vulnerable to the disruptions in the supply chain, but more importantly, it makes it easier for Tesla to keep down the costs and make improvements in the manufacturing as well as the component better. It is all about creating synergies and thinking outside the box, which gives Tesla an unique overview and control of the whole chain of components needed to make the products. This is something most companies in any industry lacks today, which gives Tesla an edge to innovate faster. One example of the way Tesla is able to make use of its vertical integration of manufacturing is very clear when you look at how fast Tesla is able to build and improve its construction of its gigafactories, where it makes its EVs and batteries. The first factory, the Fremont factory, where Tesla makes its Model X, Model S, Model Y and Model 3 in California, is very impressive with all its robots and utilizing even the parking area to build more assembly lines. I've seen how impressive the Fremont factory is with my own eyes. I went to the factory for a tour in 2015. This was just when the production of the Model X was getting started. But the Fremont factory was bought from a Toyota and GM joint venture and was not built to optimize the production of electric vehicles and definitely not for the production of batteries. But Tesla is building three gigantic factories for manufacturing of EVs and batteries at the same time. One in China, one in Germany and one in Texas. These new factories will make EVs and batteries in a super automated way. Elon Musk has described the gigafactories like a giant machine making machines where every inch of the factory is optimized to save costs and energy. And again, Tesla really thinks outside the box, all the time. Another example of this is how the company is simplifying the manufacturing to decrease the number of parts needed in the cars. This keeps down the costs of course, but also enables major technical improvements and even safety of the cars can be improved.
Another clear example of Tesla's innovation that really stands out, but not so many know about, is the newly developed heat pump and so-called octavalve that Tesla's developed for Model Y. If you are familiar with EVs such as Jaguar I-Pace and Mercedes-Benz EQC, they have also improved their range by using a heat pump for heating the cabin and saving energy from the battery. But Tesla has really taken this a step further and developed a heat pump that is basically integrated into the car in one piece, but as a special piece to help it out. And this is the so-called octavalve. The octavalve is quite complicated, but I found a quite nice description on the blog Tasmanian. The octavalve contains a four-position electric stepper motor whose job is to apportion liquid glycol-based coolant to various components in the car, whether it's the motors, batteries, power electronics or other systems that need thermal regulation. A concrete example of this is that Tesla has developed a so-called multi-directional unibody casting machine. This new, very innovative casting machine will, according to Elon Musk, make it possible to make a vehicle frame that otherwise would take 70 parts, but now will only be made into one. So Tesla innovates and improves their EVs in a pace unparalleled to the rest of the industry, which is why they stay ahead of the curve. Now, how are they able to do this? Partly because they are totally focused on EVs and always looks for synergies, either within the company itself, with different engineering compartments working together, but also because they look for solutions outside the car industry. But what really drives Tesla's disruptive innovation is its growing pool of talented people. Tesla is considered one of the most attractive places in the world to work at. And with lots of smart people, you can achieve almost anything. Tesla is in fact the second most sought after place to work at in the United States. Second only after SpaceX, of course, another Elon Musk company. This is according to a survey made by the Universum last year. And connected to the talented people working at Tesla, there is a huge community of talented people owning Teslas that continues to share their ideas with Tesla and tell other people about Tesla's products. The fact that Tesla has been able to attract an army of talented people as well as customers to improve and innovate its products is worth more than any money and marketing in the world can buy. This moves us to my third point. Ever since I got my Tesla back in 2014, I've been hearing that Tesla will go bankrupt anytime soon and the big automakers can just turn a switch and go electric whenever they want to. Well, I will argue that this is not the case. In fact, I would worry a lot if I were the big automakers, because they are not catching up at all. Let's take a closer look. According to Tesla's latest Q2 earnings report, the company has 8.6 billion US dollars in the bank. And with the company's current operating costs of about $1 billion per quarter and about $0.5 billion in capital expenditure, the company can therefore easily handle about two years of a really tough global recession, for example, or something similar, without having to raise a penny and still be able to grow and invest in new factories. Now, some people will argue that if we end up in a depression like in the 1930s, Tesla will not survive. I am arguing that Tesla is better equipped to handle a prolonged time of crisis than many other companies. This is why. What most people don't realize is that Elon and Tesla is in a unique position to raise capital, either from the public market or from share offering to institutional and big private investors. If we look at the Tesla daily trade in the stock market as of Monday, August 25th, an astonishing 11% of the total outstanding stocks were traded that day. But let's assume an average of 7.7% .7 per day, which is more normal for Tesla. This means that about 20.69 billion US dollar worth of Tesla shares are traded every day. So let's say Tesla would want to raise 4 billion US dollars by issuing more shares it could easily do so because it would be dwarfed by the demand for Tesla shares on the market and would likely have an insignificant negative effect on the stock price.
but there are a number of other ways Tesla could raise money. Tesla have no problem doing what the rest of the auto industry has done for decades, simply to take a loan to finance its expansion. If we just look at China, Tesla has been granted several loans over the last year alone for almost 2 billion US dollars from Chinese banks, with option for more if needed. But what everybody is talking about now, of course, is that Tesla is expected to be listed on the S&P 500 within the next couple of months, which effectively would force index funds to buy billions worth of Tesla stock. There are several index funds that only own shares in the S&P 500 companies. Ironically, being listed on the S&P 500 would also make it possible for Tesla to take up more debt to make big investment should they have the need to do so. This is simply because it's more common for S&P 500 companies to have more legroom to take up debt, since being listed there is a recognition of trust to the market and brings in a lot of new shareholders and investors. Another clear sign of Tesla's trajectory, a so-called stock split of 5 to 1, which means that each shareholder will get 4 more shares for each share owned at one-fifth of the price. A stock split is simply a way of lowering the price per share to make it more accessible to more buyers, but it does not dilute the wealth of your investments, since you get a proportional number of new shares at the new price per share. The split goes into effect August 31st, and I expect this will attract many more smaller investors that simply couldn't afford a $2,000 share price, but would really like to own a Tesla stock. I also believe that the split is strategically executed by Tesla right now to make it easier for the S&P 500 listing and also well in advance of the much anticipated Battery Investor Day that is to take place the 22nd of September. At the Tesla Battery Investor Day, Tesla is expected to make major announcements about new battery manufacturing technologies and a new improved battery pack with longer range for EVs. I will talk more about the battery tech in later episodes here on The Evolution Show. Thanks for watching The Evolution Show. I hope you found some of my thinking when it comes to Tesla and investing in disruptive companies useful. Share what you think in the comments below. And also, if you like the show, consider subscribing and give us a thumbs up. It really helps the show. In the next episode, I'll talk to the CEO of a really disruptive company that develops a commercial electric airplane. Hort Aerospace. The episode will be out next week, so I hope to see you next week. <laughs>